Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a da ba Hey everybody, it's the last Monday of 2023, so we're gonna do the second of two videos about current media that I do per year. This one about my favorite albums of 2023. There's been a lot of discourse about year-end lists and numbering and ranking things, and yeah, I agree that it is maybe not necessarily the best thing to do all the time, but I do like it for helping codify my opinions of a certain time. But sort of implied in that is that my opinions change all the time. For instance, if you look at my list from last year, save from Beyonce at the top, a lot of those I don't really listen to that much anymore. The Beths, I will listen to forever, love them. A lot of the rest of those I haven't listened to as much in 2023. I also want to compare this against 2013's list. So 10 years ago, around this time, I put out this list on my personal social media. That Laura Marling album is at the top. That's one of my absolute all-time favorite albums, but a lot of the rest of this list has held up. These are just my opinions. My opinions might not even stay, but to sort of help with that, instead of giving a numbered list this year, I'm going to rank them into different categories. My categories are just going to be numbered. One, two, three, and four. The larger the number, the more albums are in that category. When I'm within a rank, I'm going to go alphabetically by album title, not by how much I like them. At first, I was a little disappointed in this album because it doesn't have as many really standout great songs that either show off her amazing, incredible vocals, or that they just have really great hooks. There are a couple, but what makes this album stick out to me, after repeated listens especially, is how good the production is. There are so many cool little intricate production things that happen on this album. And, you know, Caroline still sounds great and can still write a great melody. I love the DIY-ness of it. It's so fun. She writes catchy as heck songs. If you're on TikTok, you've probably heard a few of them. I really have enjoyed how Young Father's music has progressed throughout the years. This current album kind of feels like it's sort of ecstatic in that sort of like ecstatic dance sort of way. It's spiritual, it's warm, it's hopeful, it's great. Uh, there's a lot of really fun songs on this that just make me feel like I am at a party listening to everyone in the room perform together when I'm listening to this. I'm not a great connoisseur of hip-hop. There are, I'm, I'm sure, a lot of nuances that I'm missing, but there are so many moments on this album that are just so much fun. But also, I really like the addition of other sounds, like sort of almost emo rock sounds on this hip-hop album. It's really cool stuff. Also, the three of them really play off each other really well and have great voices. This thing is beautiful and so intricately done. There's some great string arrangements by one of my other favorite musicians, Owen Pallet. There are excellent vocals on this album, and a lot of it is just like this busy, organic, tinkering, with all of the instruments and then Sampha's voice just like breathy floating over the top. It's there's some gorgeous stuff on here. Also a lot of really fun stuff. I've been into Little Dragon forever and I was really happy that they put out this really fun album. There's a lot of great groovy music on this one. It's a fun concept album from the point of view of a cockroach fighting against God. And it sort of goes through these different philosophies, starting with nihilism, then to existentialism. It's great, it's heady, and it's also really fun. So give that one a listen if that sounds interesting to you. Underscore is, is a singer, songwriter, producer, does everything herself basically, and is really excellent at it. This is hyper pop with some punk and some softer singer songwriter stuff going on. This is another concept album about various inhabitants of a small town and all of the songs are told from the point of view of one or two or three residents at a time. So really, really, really cool album. Water From Your Eyes is a duo uh, singer and guitarist producer 
and the two of them are really, really cool. <laughs> There's a lot of fun exploration with rhythm. There's a lot of exploration with microtones, and it's just this kind of flat affect vocal delivery from the vocalist in a way that really kind of amps up everything else that's happening around them. Really cool stuff. I've been into Samya since her early EPs, and this one feels like a really meaningful step forward in her maturation as a songwriter. But also she got to work with some really great co-songwriters on some of the songs, like Christian Lee Hudson and Rostam, both of whom I love. But they're good in how they worked with her and that these all still sound like Samia songs. They don't sound like their own songs, you know, if that makes sense. This album is really intense if you really focus in on the lyrics. And I'm normally not a lyrics person, but reading through the lyrics while I listened did deepen my appreciation of this album in a way that it I hadn't expected it to. Sammy is an excellent lyricist and songwriter, and some of these songs are just crushing. And I also love that one of the actually happy songs on the album is named after Amelia of Sylvan Esso and how great of a person Amelia is, and I love that. <laughs> Sort of like Water For Your Eyes, Squid is an experimental rock group, but they've got a little bit more of like a chamber feel because they've got some woodwinds in the band. And actually they're touring with Water From Your Eyes and I'm going to try and see them if I if the timing works out for me. Squid sort of does longer songs that have more of a groove feel to them and yelpy vocals from the lead singer who's also the drummer. It's They're a fun listen if, if you want to give them a shot. Molly and I talked about this in the Music in 2023 So Far album. That Feels Good is just such a great dance pop album. It's campy, it's fun, it's flirty, it's sexy. It feels good to listen to, and it makes me want to dance while I'm listening. I love this album, and it sort of took me a while to get into it because it's a pretty deep album. And the first single wasn't my favorite, but I like how Bug Like an Angel gets you into the album. Then by the time we get to about the midpoint of the album, the songs get really, really good and they ride that high wave to the end of the album. I especially love My Love, Mine, All Mine. Also the music video for that. That music video is stunning. So check that out if you are not familiar with Mitski another album that Molly and I talked about in that previous video. Basically everything that we said about that stands here. It's so beautiful how it's about these three people's friendship. That's really what the album's about. Great standout tracks like $20 or my favorite Not Strong Enough. If you're on the internet at all, I can't imagine that you haven't heard at least a track or two from this, so give it a listen. Again, Molly and I talked about this in that previous video. In doing a little bit more research on it, I realized that Namdi has a lot of co-writing and co-producing credits on this, and that's fun. And as we said about Kara in the previous video, she is a brilliant poet, like brilliant poet, in how she makes everything feel so intense with really simple lyrics. She doesn't use crazy big words or anything like that. And then her lyrics are amplified by her simple but effective guitar playing and her extremely gorgeous, thick, rich, low voice. Listen to her, please. I think listening to this album is basically guaranteed to lower your blood pressure. There's only one album in this tier, and it is by a pretty big margin my favorite of the year. Again, we've talked about this before in the previous video, but every new track on this especially toward the beginning, just makes me want to fist pump and say, yes, <laughs> it's it's so good. Um, my favorite on the album is probably Mosquito, but a lot of the album is really, really, really good. And I think it's really well paced. There are some breaks in the intensity to allow for some really actually beautiful and haunting music to come through instead. Even though this is, you know, heavy industrial music, a lot of it has a dance beat, which is part of what makes me really love it. A lot of the album is pretty intensely violent and sexual in a way that is unsettling but i think it's supposed to be and it sort of helps come to that catharsis at the end of the album it all works so well excellent 
playing from everyone in the group and especially excellent vocals. I really love the vocalist. All right, so those are my favorites of the year. Let me know what your favorites are. And what do you think of any of the ones that I mentioned? I'd love to hear about your favorites in the comments below. Please give this video a like if you liked it or give it a pity like if you didn't like it. To this side, there's a video that YouTube thinks you might like, so check that out. Up here is the button you can click to subscribe to our channel. We put out mostly reviews of music and video games, but a couple other things like movies and TV sometimes. And we stick mostly to retro stuff. We're about to start getting into media from 1992, which is exciting. Yeah, that's it. Cheers to a better 2024 for everybody and maintain your groovy selves. See y'all next time.